This type of solar power plants can win the competition from thermal power plants, and now the victory of solar energy becomes a reality thanks to the following invention of scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I remind you that these mirrors focus solar radiation into this receiver, which is a tube for the circulation of liquid thermal oil, and therefore solar energy heats the oil to a temperature of almost 400 degrees. This hot oil from all receivers forms a large flow in such pipes, and recently the Massachusetts Institute of Technology proposed turning this oil flow into rain. This oil rain must take place in a gigantic trench of this cross-section and about a kilometer long. This trench is filled with gravel with a total mass of almost 2 million tons, which is about the same as in such a rock, almost 100 meters high. So, the oil rain starts here. Drops of the hot oil transfer their thermal energy to the gravel and move to this puddle of colder oil, which moves to the receiver for heating and so on. So, this is a heat storage with a large mass of gravel, which has a temperature of about 350 degrees Celsius, and we can take this thermal energy to generate steam for a turbine with an electric generator. We can take the thermal energy not only during the day, but also at night, and we take the energy through the rain of oil, and its drops are heated by the hot gravel and collect in this oil puddle. This hot oil is taken to generate steam for a turbine, as a result of which the oil loses its thermal energy, and then it becomes the oil rain again, heats up, and so on. Of course, we know that many of these solar power plants already have such heat storages, which are filled with similar molten salt. But these heat storages are several dozen times more expensive than this proposal from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In addition, the high cost of this molten salt heat storage means that they only store energy for several hours of turbine operation in the evening and at night. At the same time, the low cost of our stone heat storage allows us to make it very large, and therefore it can store energy not only for the coming night, but also for non-solar days. Moreover, we can charge our gigantic heat storages with summer thermal energy, and they will store it until the winter months. That is why our solar power plants can be independent of the weather and work just as well in non-solar winters as they do in sunny summers. And the quality of our solar electricity will be better than the quality of electricity from thermal power plants, which cannot turn their turbines on and off as cheaply and quickly as we can. Nevertheless, we must win over thermal power plants not only in terms of the quality of electricity, but also in terms of the cost of electricity, and these are the conditions of our victory. This formula requires that we must produce high-quality solar electricity at this cost, 5 cents per kilowatt hour, and let's analyze whether we can do it. For example, let's pay attention to this requirement that the thermal energy from our solar heaters must be very cheap, at half a cent per kilowatt hour. I remind you that my YouTube channel is trying to find and explore various solar heaters that seem to be able to provide thermal energy at the cost of half a cent per kilowatt hour to heat thermal oil with a temperature of several hundred degrees. My videos from this year have already covered at least four types of solar heaters we need, and now I am preparing a few more types. My research aims to prove to you that we can find several dozen types that can give us very cheap solar energy, which is many times cheaper than heat from natural gas or other traditional energy sources. Now let's analyze whether this type of heat storage from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology is suitable for our purpose. Unfortunately, this total construction cost of our heat storage looks hard to achieve. In addition, it has large heat losses through this soil and towards groundwater, and these heat losses can significantly degrade this total efficiency. However, I remind you that this was a case of transferring a large amount of thermal energy from summer to winter, but we can change our goal, for example, in this way, when the volume of our heat storage decreases by 10 times. As a result, those heat losses are drastically reduced, and this total construction cost becomes realistic – $60 per ton of gravel. 
But now our heat storage only holds energy for a few non-solar days in a row, and this amount of energy is 5 or 10 times more than the capabilities of these modern heat storages based on molten salt. Another opportunity to improve the economic performance of our gigantic heat storage would be if we locate our solar power plant close to some factory which needs a lot of thermal energy with a temperature of about 100 degrees. This case encourages our turbines to simultaneously produce electricity and heat which is sold to that factory. This additional income markedly improves the profitability of the gigantic heat storage for transferring thermal energy from summer to winter. Of course, we can improve this idea from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and this is our first proposal. These masses of cheap soil or sand replace our spending on expensive gravel and remains of expensive thermal oil on the gravel surfaces. It is obvious that these cheap masses are heated by the gravel in the summer, and they return the thermal energy in the winter. Another idea is similar to such well-known methods of heat exchange with soil masses through pipes. We can surround our gravel heat storage with one or more shells of steel pipes, through which thermal energy of different temperatures is taken. This method reduces this flow of thermal energy, which we lose completely and irretrievably, but increases this thermal energy flow. In addition, this method increases the volume of our heat storage, because these layers of soil also transfer heat from summer to winter. The next idea is to reduce these heat losses from our heat storage. We can build our heat storage in the form of an artificial mountain, and here we can install layers of mineral wool with a thickness of several meters. These heat losses towards groundwater are reduced by this thick layer of soil, and here we can add a layer of soil or sand additionally. Our next idea is to eliminate this gravel and replace it with cheaper sand or soil. Our thermal oil must circulate through steel pipes inside that sand or soil, similar to the solutions for heat exchange between pipes and soil. I remind you that my video analyzed these cases for sunny desert climate, and they are not suitable for northern Europe, where the winter months have a small number of sunny days. This is the situation for northern Europe, and we see that 5 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity is a difficult target there. This is due to the higher cost of this thermal solar energy, and the increase in this volume of our heat storage by several times. In addition, these values also tend to get worse for the case of Northern Europe, but this value can be increased due to the lower cost of European capital. However, Scandinavia, Austria, Germany, Poland and other countries have many cities with district heating. That is why we can find there so many solar collectors, which produce a huge amount of solar thermal energy for heating cities in winter and their hot water supply in summer. So, our turbines can simultaneously produce electricity and heat, which is sold to European cities. This additional income significantly reduces the cost of our solar electricity, compared to this case of electricity production without the heat sale.